and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, good job by the guys today. Thought we had a good approach, and uh, you know, thought uh, just in challenging, you know, some guys coming off of uh, the Chicago State game in terms of, you know, our readiness and and leadership and just having everybody engaged was there tonight. And it showed in some guys' play. Juwan was terrific. Uh, Justin was very good tonight. Evan really helped. I thought our front line did a good job. And then, you know, we have a, a lot of different types of players in the game in the backcourt. And each and every one of them, I think, had their moments. But we're just trying to become a very unselfish team. Uh, I think our guys are starting to understand that if the way we move the ball and the way that we play, we can be hard to defend. And from a defensive perspective, the numbers would say it was good. I'm sure there's going to be a lot on film that we got to get better at, but we're playing hard. And, we're going to have to be ready to play the hardest we've ever played starting next week, and, and, and that'll be that'll be a, a great test for us on Wednesday. Okay, first question back here. <coughs> Coach, you mentioned looking at the you still got to look at the film, but you weren't necessarily happy with the defense after Chicago State. How did you grade out just tonight? I think we were better on the ball. I think we had better activity level. Uh, we worked harder on defensively to challenge them. Um, I didn't think, again, we were very good in transition at times, especially early. And there's some things that we really got to get shored up in that because, you know, we're really going to be exposed here moving forward by the talent level and the, and the speed of the game and the players that you're not going to get away with that, with that amount of mistakes. And, and a lot of it just has everything to do with, you know, positioning, you know, sprinting, you know, being where you're supposed to be. And we're going to try and keep, uh, we're going to try and keep getting better. I mean, the, this team has to has to find a way to be a fantastic defensive team. Regardless of what you say on offense, this team has to find a way to make its defense charge its offense every game. And uh, you know you can see when the activity level is good and there is defense to offense, we can strike quick, and that's something I think that we have to just continue to take a lot of pride in, in building our half court defense. Coach, you mentioned that Juwan needs to be more assertive in, in asking for the ball. He seemed to do that tonight uh, early on. Really, it was a real emphasis coming out of Chicago State, and part of it is him wanting the ball, demanding the ball, us making sure that we understand that we're getting the ball to him. And then he did his job tonight, just in terms of the one. You know, he wanted it when he caught it. He was very, very focused, and he had a good approach the last two days. And it was good to see him, you know, pretty much dominate the paint tonight. Forgive me, I think I've asked about this before, but it's like 53 points off turnovers in the first two games. You've talked about bridging defense to offense, but what's making this group so good, not just in turning the ball over, but so good out in the open floor off the turnovers? Well, that's a good question because, you know, uh, we, we weren't very good at it here early in the season. Our defense, number one, has to be a quick, tenacious half-court defense that flies around. We have to make people react to us in terms of our talent level. Uh, we're not the biggest of, of rim protectors, and we don't have – unbelievably uh, veteran crew of guys that have been playing a long time, but we have length, we have speed, and we have a lot of it. So if there's a consistency there and we're able to get out in transition, then it's the next step. How unselfish are you? You know, are you going to just absolutely run the floor extremely hard? Are you going to hit the first open man? Are you going to be willing to make the extra pass? And I think in the last two games, we've really gotten better at that, and that'll be a key moving forward. Juwan mentioned how much different the approach was and just kind of how the play was start this year versus the start last year. And you said the older guys really made a point of emphasis. Why do you think you guys were just more ready just out of the gate this year? I mean, we have some guys, some veteran guys that played a lot of minutes last year that understand how we grew over the course of the season, finished, and understand that you have to be you know, ready every single night. We have to be at a higher starting level this year uh, with our older guys. They have to be able to lead the way. Last year's team, you know, wasn't ready to start the season very well. Our staff, all the way down. You know, we were we were we were a hodgepodge of something that wasn't very good. And they grew to be better. This group has a chance to be better early in the season, but we got a long way to go. All right, going against their two-three matchup. How how much of a luxury is it to have a six-ten guy like Fitzner to come to the free throw line? You can lob it to him. He can shoot from there, and he can high low it from there. Yeah, he's a fantastic high-low player. Um, he catches the ball. He keeps it high. He can throw over the defense. He's got great touch in the paint, as you can see. And he's gotten off to a really, really good start for us just in terms of being able to play. Um, the changing defenses the last two games, we've seen a lot of zone. We've seen a lot of matchup. But, you know, obviously our biggest concern is going to be half-court offense against man-to-man -man coming up here pretty soon. We're going to have to find a way to execute and get good looks. We're still not shooting the ball extremely well from the line, and we're still not shooting the ball extremely well from three, and we don't aspire to be that team that jacks threes at the end of the half. You started to see just the shot selection really wasn't very good, uh, so we're going to have to continue to take the good threes, but 
and uh, you know get some guys with some confidence behind the line and at the line. We're just we've got to find a way to break through in those two things. So. Uh, Justin was affected tonight. What do you think is the biggest way, uh, difference in the way he's played so far this year, where he was at this time last year? Well, last year, I mean, he was a you know true freshman just trying to figure out how to play a college basketball game. I mean, he's got a, a wealth of experience after the year. He's had an offseason to change, continue to change physically. And he's a much tougher player on both ends of the floor, but he's a much tougher player on offense right now. He's a little bit more confident in terms of his finishing and his ability to you know, to get to the basket, especially in transition. But defensively, he's a lot better than he ever has been. So, you know, he's definitely an improved part of our team. Jeff? Where would you say Jerome Hunter is at health-wise, and what's the most likely return for him at this point? Um, Jerome is on a to-be-determined basis. Um, he's going to be out probably for a, a significant stretch here as we continue to try and figure out and find ways to get his diagnosis done find out what the correct way of handling it is, and then see where the next step is. It's, it's sort of a, a leg injury, but it's not a typical leg injury that is, a, is an injury caused by practicing or something. It's more of a uh, underlying effect that's causing him some pain. And uh, when we get all the answers, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be uh, evaluated and decided on. As of right now, though, Jerome will be out for a to-be-determined amount of time. You mentioned Justin and the uh, with about five minutes left in the first half, he, he took, took and missed a three really early in the shot clock. I saw you talk to him a little bit. And he responded with two really nice assists, a tip in, and a nice give and go with Jawan. So how, how do you... Like he was, he was open, but the, we ran a specific action to, to, to get it inside to see if we could get fouled. Uh, he knew he, he took an open shot, but my point would have been to him, stick with it right now. And then he came right back and made a couple really good plays for us. You mentioned uh, getting some guys' confidence uh, from shooting behind the arc. Was that kind of the reason that uh, Rob Finnessy was in a little bit later? It seemed like there was a couple of occasions where he seemed not determined to take a shot, but it seemed like that was something that was on his mind to uh, you know, take a couple of threes. And get Rob's, a, Rob's a good shooter. He's going to take advantage of the quality ones when he's open. We have confidence in him. Some of the other guys, especially a guy like Al, hasn't practiced in quite a bit of time or played a ton of minutes, so you got to get his feet under him. Same with Devontae. Monte basically has only been back for about a week and has had to get his feet under him in games. I think those guys will be better. Denise, obviously, I think he's a good shooter. Zach can make an open one. And, uh, you know, we want all those guys to have great confidence when they're out there. And especially even a guy like Romeo, you know, finding a way to stretch the floor for us. But we don't want to aspire to take a ton of threes. I don't think that's that this team's niche. But I do think if we take the good ones, we'll make them. Archie, kind of going off what you just mentioned about Devontae, you've had a chance to see him in two games now. How do you kind of evaluate what you've seen from him in the early part of the season? He's fine. I mean, he's doing a good job. He's a little rusty. I think his decision making, you know, he's got to pick up his decision making. We talked a lot about it before before practice today and before the game with him. You know, it really comes down with a defensive mindset for him first to be in concentration mode. And then from two things from offense is be a facilitator first, score second. He's, he's naturally a gifted scorer, but he's also a very gifted passer. You know, you can just tell when he's on, on his game, the ball's getting delivered at a high assist rate, low turnovers, and the shots and the things that he can create offensively come second. You know, that's how he has to play. When he's in there, he's got to keep the pace up, and he's got to continue to find ways to make guys better and let the rest kind of take care of itself. Mike? Um, just a couple ones for you. Zach didn't warm up uh, coming out of the break. Uh, what, what was going on there? And he came up with some back tightness. He's been dealing with that uh, for a good three to four weeks. I don't think he uh, felt very good early in part of the game, and from that point forward, we just decided to rest him. And just uh, Duran, as he plays himself back in game shape, I mean, is he where you thought he might be just within that right now, just kind of getting the minutes that he's get? He's okay. I'm, I'm not sure how many he got today. First half, he only played three. We really tried to get him some minutes in the second half. Um, and they're playing like probably end up playing more more around eight eight to nine in the second half. But Duran needs to start pushing his conditioning level in the games. That's what he has to start to work on right now. Uh, you know, he's not ready defensively more so than anything to be able to guard a really good team just because of the, the lack of reps and, and that. But he's going to have to work himself through it every day the best he can. He's got to work himself through it the best he can in the games. And, and hopefully as he progresses through non-conference and enters conference play, he, you know, he's in much better shape. All right, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.